Hi everyone, welcome back to Jax Maps. I'm George Ferrar and once again I'm pleased to bring you another episode of Jax Maps where we take a look at old maps of Jacksonville, Florida, Duval County, out of North Florida. And I have two maps that I want to drill down on today. So I'm going to jump right in. Right here we have a 1918 U.S. Geological Survey map of Jacksonville and of South Jacksonville, of Murray Hill, and some interesting different places. New Springfield, Brentwood, Brooklyn, Phillips, St. Nicholas. Now, of course, we have the basic lay of the land here. We see the St. John's River winding around with a bend right there at downtown. We see Trout Creek. We see all the different um, creeks and tributaries. And it looks like then we have swampland denoted here or there. We have the railroads. We have the, the seaboard, the seaboard line. We have the Atlantic coastline. And we have roads. We have Moncrief Road. And we have the, the, the of course, the streets downtown. And we, we're, we're seeing Jacksonville really growing. You know, the Great Fire of 1901 was only, you know, 17 years before uh, this depiction, this map. But already we see uh, growth occurring beyond downtown proper. We see Murray Hill. We see the Florida Military Academy. We see St. John's Park off towards the southwest. And we start to see roads branching off to the south and to the east from South Jacksonville. We see the rail crossing at downtown. But of course, we don't see any road crossings yet. The Acosta Bridge won't come along until 1921. So really what we're looking at when we look at this map are these different places, these different uh, neighborhoods, suburbs uh, that are growing, that are developing in their own right. So we have one, one place up here, looks like it says Pride City, off of Moncrief Road. To the north, Oakhurst. Further to the north, Riverview. And you could just spend, you could spend, I don't know, an hour or so just looking at some of the detail that these maps show. You have the county prison farm. Uh, just above Brentwood. You have the city prison farm across Trout Creek. So, uh, and of course, the, you see the extensiveness of the railroad, too. You see uh, not only, do you see the Atlantic coast, you see the, uh, the seaboard uh, airline, but you also see the Georgia Southern and Florida. And then, of course, you know the familiar names, Phillips. So, uh, if you think about it, uh, we're seeing Jacksonville uh, right, right as the car is really start, the automobile is really getting to going. Uh, so, it's the things are encouraging this growth. Uh, cars and trucks are starting to really uh, become a commercial factor. Uh, you know, um, so, so that is helping some of this to happen. But for long distance travel, we see, we see the power of the railroads. And which makes sense because uh, a year uh, after this, this map was uh, put out, 
in 1919, the new uh, Jacksonville Terminal was constructed, where our current convention center is today. So it, it, you can see the, the importance, even back then, the logistical importance, when you look at the river traffic, okay, you see the along the downtown, you see the, the piers, right? The river traffic and the railroads converging, then they will branch out, and the roads branch out from downtown. So I've given you just a minute or two, really, a couple minutes with this map. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's out there on the Internet. I'll just pick things up, grab it, and talk about it with you. And when you take a look... Uh, even more at this channel what I offer you're going to see uh, the references for example to Murray Hill I did a whole show about Murray Hill so we have a lot of history in Jacksonville and I think these maps are a way of us reminding ourselves of where we've come from and ultimately where we would be going speaking of going we're now going to blast forward to the early 1960s before the construction of Interstate 95 South from the South Bank heading towards the South Side heading towards St. Augustine and Miami this was a very unique time in Jacksonville history on this map we see uh, Emerson Street we see Beach Boulevard we see San Marco Boulevard we see the approaches to the bridges that had since been constructed. The Acosta Bridge had been constructed in 1921, opened in 1921. The Main Street Bridge opened in 1941. The Fort Warren Bridge opened in 1954. So all of this bridge building and all of this traffic is bringing a lot of people onto the South Bank, the area previously known as South Jacksonville. We know it as San Marco, the San Marco neighborhood and area. And we look, we look beyond that, looking down towards Emerson Street, you know, Phillips Highway, Hendricks Avenue, okay? The, uh, the Phillips Mall, designated here, indicated as a shopping center. As a it's a, it was essentially a plaza in the early 1960s uh, at Phillips Highway, and Emerson Street, Phillips Highway being US-1. Further, slightly further to the north, you have Spring Park Road, slightly further to the north of that, you have Beach Boulevard, otherwise known as US-90. Further north to that, you have State Road 10, not designated as 10 here, but it's indicated as Atlantic Boulevard. But what it gets even more interesting as you look further to the north to the top of the map because you notice first of all there's no heart bridge the heart bridge has not yet been constructed you see the municipal electric plant number two is designated there that's was has long since gone and been destroyed that is the around the area where they want to do a development called the district uh, so uh, kind of a, a uh, uh, interesting residential commercial type development uh, and there at one point been a Gibbs shipyard okay so so at one point there had been shipyards on the South Bank okay so you know when I look at things in 2019 you know you think ahead this electric plant's gone uh, you know all of that's gone so there's this land so there's this all this ability for people to develop where there wasn't an opportunity so long ago talk about change right and then of course if you look you look further you, you, you'll see a Prudential building Baptist Memorial Hospital we know the Prudential building now uh, was the Aetna building then uh, it's known as one call building uh, so so all sorts of different things when you can really drill down on the the detail and you can go into these neighborhoods now this is before I-95 is completed is constructed so if you can imagine where I-95 would be falling just to the uh, would be being constructed falling just to the right of Phillips Highway and then 
you can imagine, of course, what a disruption that was to the area at the time. Funny thing is, you look further, if you look all the way up further to the, to the north, to the top tip top, you can see it. I'm designating a plain where on the north bank would be the, the county courthouse and the city hall. And of course, the old city hall uh, was imploded earlier this month. So if you think about it, so much change. And we have these maps, these points of reference, these neat points of reference that we have to look back and talk about. So I hope you're enjoying this show. I want to talk with you now about another show that broadcasts here on the Jack's Life channel, known as History Jacksonville. History Jacksonville is my pride and joy. It's my labor of love for the people of Jacksonville, Florida. It's the flagship show on this channel, newly renamed the Jack's Life channel. Since 2012, I've been talking and showing you Jacksonville history on this channel since 2013. Here we see an old picture of the old Duval County Courthouse, the old Jacksonville City Hall. This would have been right when the old City Hall first opened. It has since been imploded. If you take a look just beyond the, the tower, you'll see the dome of the old Duval County Courthouse, that having at that time been destroyed. Okay, and we see these old cars. <laughs> okay, well, I call them old cars, but stay of the art for the time, of course, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so the goal of History Jacksonville is to educate, enlighten, and entertain our community as a nonprofit collective effort. Effort, not an organization, as much as it is an effort. And all of the shows that I do, all of my shows are at the lefttournetwork.com. So you get a chance to take a look at everything. And History Jacksonville is a body of work. And, and this Jack's Map show, I think, is something that additional that I bring that ultimately I think is going to enhance History Jacksonville because it's going to enable me to kind of go out, take a look at some maps, and, and start bringing things into History Jacksonville. There'll maybe things from History Jacksonville I can bring into this show. And now is the time where I thank you for watching this channel. Recently, I renamed it from the Jack's Left channel to the Jack's Life channel because there's a lot more that I'm bringing you. Uh, there's a lot more to life than just, dare I say it, just politics. There's some deeper things. There's some deeper, and I guess as we take a look at this picture of the St. John's River and the downtown uh, skyline, uh, there's something that's deeper in, in what I try to bring you. And I hope that you're getting some of that depth, that you're enjoying it, that you like it, and that if you would please subscribe and share and tell your friends, <laughs> and I like to say always, tell your enemies too. <laughs> uh, tell them about this show. Uh, and, and definitely let me know your ideas, okay? I'm aware of certain limitations with the Jack's Map series as so far as graphics and things like that. I want to do more with that. Later this spring, I'll be coming at you with a better Jack's Maps uh, with 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 more there, there's always more there's always more and the best is yet to come I, I haven't been this optimistic about this channel since the day I founded it and started it in April 2013 thanks for watching take it easy see you later